It was a film about a ship that vanished without a trace. So how fitting is it that roughly 30 minutes of the original version of Event Horizon have suffered the same fate? What happened to the most disturbing sequences of Paul Anderson's sci-fi horror flick, and more importantly, will we ever see those scenes? Grab your scalpels, because we're about to peel back the layers of this lost media mystery on today's episode of Deep Cuts. It was the summer of 1997. Kids were clamoring for Tamagotchis, teens were watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and saying wildly inappropriate things to each other on AOL's new instant messenger service. The Spice Girls ruled the world. Then, on August 15, things got gruesome with the release of Paul W.S. Anderson's sci-fi horror flick, Event Horizon. The film tells the story of a rescue crew sent to investigate a missing spaceship, the Event Horizon, which has reappeared after disappearing through a black hole. The crew discovers that the ship's experimental propulsion system has opened a gateway to hell, unleashing a demonic force into our galaxy. Production of Event Horizon began in 1995 with a screenplay written by Philip Eisner. The film was shot primarily at Pinewood Studios in the United Kingdom, with additional filming taking place in the United States. At its core, Event Horizon was essentially a haunted house movie set in outer space, like The Shining or The Haunting on a Spaceship. With a Hollywood cast that included Sam Neill and Lawrence Fishburne, plus a $60 million budget, expectations were high for this movie. I wanted to make a, a more traditional classic haunted house movie, and I think what's good about movies like The Shining, and also another movie that had a big influence on this film, which was Robert Wise's The Haunting. They don't show you the monster, they don't show you the ghosts, they don't show you the creature. But the road to the screen was best described as rocky for Anderson's film. The August release date was not the original release date for the project, but instead came about because Paramount needed to shuffle titles and dates to fill a July slot in their schedule left vacant by James Cameron's Titanic. That film was plagued with numerous delays during production. We had this crunch because we were brought forward to release in the summertime to take the place of Titanic, which wouldn't have been my first choice, but you know, when you spend tens of millions of dollars of somebody else's money, you don't get to make those kind of decisions. The release shuffling, coupled with Anderson's desire to be involved in the second unit shooting, meant that Event Horizon wouldn't have the traditional 10-week editing cycle and would instead have to be completed in six. This was challenging enough, but things got even worse when the production's second unit filming schedule conflicted with the editing schedule, leaving Anderson a scant four weeks to edit his feature film. This time crunch resulted in an incomplete movie, but Anderson did cobble together a two hour and ten minute rough cut of the film. And this is where everything starts to go really wrong. Paramount, who'd viewed the dailies of each day shooting early on, felt that the film was in good shape and appears to have basically stopped paying attention, convinced that Anderson, who was hot off the success of 1995's Mortal Kombat movie, was capable of bringing in another hit. The studio got a harsh dose of reality when they saw Anderson's rough cut of the film at a test screening. By all accounts, the two plus hour rough cut of Event Horizon was overly long, filled with incomplete effects shots, and a sound mix that was subpar at best. As Anderson admits, it was a rough cut that needed at least one more editing pass. But it wasn't the film's incomplete nature and work print status that shocked the studio and test audiences the most. <laughs> now, that honor went to the content of the film. The first test screening we had of Event was just disastrous. It didn't go well at all. As mentioned earlier, Paramount execs stopped looking at the dailies for Event Horizon pretty early on. They apparently never looked at the second unit footage Anderson and Robin Vigeon shot, which was where the majority of the film's gore went from the page to the screen. Anderson describes the situation in an interview. It was reduced unit footage. I think the studio never bothered watching it because they thought it was inserts and buttons being pressed or something. But what it all was was actually all of the hell footage, influenced by Bosch and Bragel. So there was a beauty to it, even though it was very disturbing. Needless to say, no one in that initial batch of viewers care much for the blood orgy sequence or many of the film's other boshy and nightmare sequences about a ship that had literally been to hell and back. They'd seen the dailies, they knew they had some good performances, they knew it looked great. But then when they saw it assembled, they were just shocked. So there was a lot of pressure to take that out, just because they thought it was too disturbing. With test audiences repulsed and the studio pissed off that their $60 million late summer horror flick was too gruesome for mainstream viewers, they sent Anderson back to the drawing board and he cuts to the film's brutal splatter sequences and that the film's 130 minute runtime be reduced considerably. The end result was the 96 minute R-rated version of Event Horizon that hit movie theaters in August of 1997 and flopped hard. The movie with a $60 million budget generated only $26 million in ticket sales in the US and only $42 million globally. Critics were at best apathetic about the film, and in some instances, were outright hostile. The complaints cover the common litany of criticism aimed at genre films. It was too gory, too loud, and not fleshed out enough. But it's here where the story of Event Horizon really gets interesting. Not everyone hated the film. In fact, I saw it back in 1997 and I loved it. 
but it was also hard to shake the feeling that compromises had been made. There was a whole kind of big, violent, kind of bloody orgy scene. They were having sex, but they were also murdering each other while they were doing it. The Visions of Hell sequences, they had to be cut. And I, and I, and I really think there's a much stronger cut with some of those sequences in. Over time, and thanks to video rental stores, Event Horizon did eventually find an appreciative audience and has gone on to become something of a cult classic amongst fans of horror cinema. Its reputation is well earned. It's a great little film with a rock solid cast, cool ideas, and even in its neutered form, some genuinely disturbing visuals. But as the film slowly found an audience, Paramount and Anderson realized there was money to be made by reinserting the excised footage of the work print and releasing it as a director's cut. There was only one problem no one had the cut footage. Event Horizon came into existence in a time where DVD was still a fledgling technology. Laserdisc was losing steam and had always been a niche format anyway. VHS was the king of the home media market, and there wasn't much demand for supplemental materials on tape. As such, a lot of excised footage from Event Horizon wasn't preserved in the best of conditions. Here's Anderson explaining it in a 2017 interview. There was a lot more that was shot that isn't in the movie, but you'll never see the messed up version because we made Event before the kind of DVD revolution. You know, DVD ushered in this era when you had to have additional footage, deleted scenes, things like that. There was no call for that back when we were just doing VHS cassettes and laser discs. So the material just wasn't archived very well, and since the movie became a big cult classic, Paramount have asked us to come back in and do different versions, and we looked for the material, and it just doesn't exist. As is the case with most lost media, it's here that the story becomes harder to actually verify. But this is the most commonly recounted version of events regarding the hunt for the missing footage. When Paramount and Anderson wanted to do the director's cut, they quickly learned that the majority of the footage was gone. What they did find turned up on the 2006 DVD release. That included one deleted scene, some extended scenes, and some stills from other deleted scenes. And what would become a recurring theme, none of this footage was better than poor VHS quality. From there, it gets even weirder. Eventually, some of the film's assets were reportedly discovered in a salt mine located in Transylvania. This might sound odd, but it's actually not that unusual. Given the delicate nature of film stock, prints and other materials are sometimes stored in places like salt mines because they have a very dry, arid environment that helps protect the original film. Unfortunately, even after being stored in a salt mine, the footage was in rough shape and the dream of a restored complete version of Event Horizon was once again as dead as most of the titular ship's crew. In fact, things were so dead at this point that Anderson was asked about when fans might see the full version in 2011, to which he replied, never. However, he pulled a 180 and changed his tune dramatically in 2012, when he announced that producer Lloyd Levin had a VHS rough cut of the film. This might seem weird in 2023, but in the days before digital editing, a movie was cut and recut by physically removing footage and splicing it back together. In today's world of Adobe and Final Cut, it's as simple as pushing a button to save an earlier cut of a project. But back in the late 90s, you would save an earlier version on a tape if you saved it at all. Fans were excited about this development and waited patiently for years for news about this rough cut footage and how it would be restored. They were let down again in 2017 when Anderson reiterated that the director's cut was never coming because the footage was destroyed. I think at this stage really to assemble a, a new version of the movie that kind of reinstates it, you would have to kind of sh reshoot some of that material because I'm not, I don't think it really exists anymore. When pressed about the rough cut tape, he acknowledged that he and Levin had never actually seen it and that Levin had moved out of the country. Did this rough cut work print even exist? If it did, you'd think they'd have at least watched it at some point. But even then, the story wasn't over. The best shot at restoring what fans have taken to calling the Anderson cut of Event Horizon came in 2021, when the team at Shout Factory announced a new Blu-ray release of the film. Everyone crossed their fingers and hoped for the best because Shout was committed to trying to find the missing footage. But alas, they too came up short. Shout Factory shared the bad news in the following statement. We did an exhaustive search for film elements for the director's cut. But as you'll hear in his new 2021 interview, director Paul W.S. Anderson doesn't think his cut will materialize. Unfortunately, much of the footage is lost, and as he mentions, he'd need to shoot new footage. We moved the release date a few times because of some leads, but to our disappointment, they didn't pan out. We definitely tried our best. That's where things stand currently, basically the same place they've been for almost 30 years. There were gory or sequences shot for Event Horizon, but they're either so badly deteriorated that they can't be saved or were scrapped as trash decades ago. Neither outcome is the happy ending we've been waiting for. It's not all doom and gloom though. While we might not ever see the full footage of that 130 minute version of the film, or Anderson's reinterpretation of that footage, some of it exists online and it has been chronicled extensively through reading the film's 130 page shooting script and various other means. This Screen Rant article from 2020 breaks down many of the excised sequences in detail.
While well, some of the lost footage is just extended scenes or scenes added to flesh out the characters, there are a number of sequences that feature more splatter. Some, like Lawrence Fishburne finding a floating tooth still connected to a partial gum, are relatively tame on the gore scale. Others, like the extended scene of the original crew's demise, were much more graphic. How graphic? Reports are Anderson hired adult film actors to appear in the scenes. Another tantalizing tidbit involves Spider Weir, which you can see online, and a different ending that didn't resonate with test audiences. Uh, we made the end of the movie all be about um, Fishburne's confrontation with Edmund Corrick, who's the man he'd originally abandoned uh, several years ago and left to burn. We kept the burning man pretty much for all of it. You, you'll see he transforms into Weir at one point, but in the version we tested, uh, we actually mapped flames and bloody skin onto Weir, so he appeared to be the burning man. Of course, being a card-carrying gorehound who can't get enough splatter in his horror movies, I'm all in favor of an Event Horizon director's cut wherein we get the full 130-minute assault on the senses that Anderson unleashed on an unsuspecting test audience and studio executives. But even if the footage were found, it seems unlikely that the Anderson cut would be the same. Anderson states on a commentary track that he feels like there's a middle ground on the gore, a version that wouldn't be as splattery as that first rough cut, but would have more carnage than the current release of the film. I was just enjoying the gruesomeness of it so much, I just probably put way too much in there. And there's probably a halfway house cut that could have worked very well, where the gore is just a little heavier than it is at the moment. At this point, I'd take any updated version of Event Horizon that attempted to restore some or all of the excised footage. This is already a surprisingly disturbing film for a Hollywood studio release, but after hearing the crew talk about the beauty and savagery of the deleted scenes, I would really love to see Anderson's uncompromised vision. Whether that's what the old footage found and restored, or reshoots of what he had back in the mid-90s doesn't matter to me. I just love to see this film as Anderson intended. It feels like that may be just a dream. Extensive searches for the footage haven't yielded anything usable, and everyone involved seems to feel that the footage is lost forever. But they said the same thing about Clive Barker's Nightbreed for years too, and that eventually turned up, so there's still a chance that the Lost Event Horizon footage is out there somewhere. In the end, it feels almost fitting that the footage has vanished like the ship of the film's title, gone without much of a trace. Here's to hoping that like the Event Horizon of the film, the footage does show up someday when we least expect it. Let's just hope we don't have to literally go through a wormhole to hell to find it.